Welcome to the DL Boxing Podcast. I am your host, Coach D, along with co-host Bad Chaz and neighborhood hero Ryan Reels, where we talk about the sport you and I love, boxing. All right, guys, welcome to episode 25. How are you guys doing today, man? Yeah, excellent, man. Good, good. How are good. you guys? I'm doing fine, man. Uh, did you guys check out the Super Bowl uh, yesterday? Yeah, I watched bits and pieces of it. Yeah, man. what an exciting game. Did you catch it? Uh, you yeah, you know what? I, I did, but I'm a poor sport, man, and uh, my <laughs> Niners didn't make it, so I was just <laughs> watching it like, ah, it's <laughs> on, you know? Yeah, I, I wasn't yeah. uh, too interested in it, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, I was just happy it was a decent game, competitive yeah. game, and uh, but too bad that the ref holding call at the end really changed you yeah. know, the drama of the game at the end, but it is what it is. But yeah. Uh, yeah, kind of congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, congrats. Awesome. Uh, in bigger news, we reached 100 subscribers, guys. Oh, Dang, congrats. nice. Yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we're very happy about that. Uh, we thank you. Thank you, Thank guys. you to our subscribers yeah, for uh, helping us reach that. Mm -hmm. Our first milestone, really, yeah. man. We yeah. greatly appreciate mm -hmm. that. All right, guys. Well, it's fight recap time. All right, guys, let's recap the fights that happened last weekend. Uh, let's take a look at the Marv Nation uh, card uh, that featured um, Fernando Vargas Jr. as the main event. But on the undercard, we had uh, Federico Pacheco yeah. in his second fight. He scored a TKO in round number one over Halston Williams. Uh, neighborhood hero Ryan Rios, uh, how did you see Federico in that fight, man? You know what? I, I thought he looked good, and I thought he was, like, levels above his, his opponent. Yeah, right. And um, you know what? It, to be honest with you, it didn't seem like that guy wanted to be in there. You know, oh, he, he got some good body shots. He got hit in the head a couple times, and to me, it seemed like he gave up. So yeah. Federico Fed Pacheco broke him down pretty easy, man, and uh, I can't wait to see what he does next because right. – uh, I think he's going to get like three, four fights this year. Yeah, and he's a young, young guy. Oh, he's like, mm -hmm. what, 18 or so? Yeah, uh, right around there. Chess, six five, looks good on his feet, uh, good body work. Uh, what impressed you about Federico? Oh, you know what? He looked patient. You know what? He yeah, he, he right. was able to go in there and, and, and land some heavy shots and hurt his opponent. But then he he still kind of played it safe. You know what I mean? He, he yeah. backed up. He was able to go back inside and land another uh, punch to hurt him. And yeah. then, uh, you know what? Ultimately win the fight. Yeah. And, and he looked mm -hmm. great for, for his age. And, his, and he's, he's a big kid. Big Can't wait kid. to see where he yeah. goes. 100%. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, Federico Pacheco, on your win. Congrats, man. Awesome, guys. Uh, to the main event, like I mentioned, Fernando Vargas Jr., uh, he he scored a knockout in round number two over Her Heranimo Saco. Um, neighborhood hero Ryan Rios. Uh, Fernando Vargas, he did his ding in there. Yeah, you know what? I thought he looked good again. And like what Chaz said, patience. You yeah. Know, it, it, for, for some reason, it just seems like he's so patient in there. And I like yeah. that. And he's calculated. Um, again, I don't feel like that guy belonged in there with him. <laughs> you know, I, I felt like he was up. levels yeah. above. And uh, he just took advantage, man. And he got the guy out of there early. But, right. but good win. You know? yeah, yeah, good win. I agree. Uh, Bad Chaz, uh, what impressed you from Vargas uh, Jr., man? Uh, you know what? Just being able to, to, to know when to go in and, and when to come back out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, when to go in there and uh, throw the body shot, when to go back upstairs, uh, when to circle yeah. his opponent, when to put it back in the middle of the ring. Um, he's just around his brothers and just having a great time. Yeah, and, right. And, uh, That's it's showing like in the see. ring, man. Yeah, it's, it is. It yeah. is, man. He overpowered his opponent. Congratulations to Fernando Vargas Jr. on your knockout victory. Yep, congratulations. All right, guys, it's time to uh, showcase the Showtime fight fights that happened this week, that last weekend as well. Uh, let's start off with... San Antonio, Texas zone, Mario Barrios. He scored an impressive technical knockout in the eighth round over Giovanni Santiago. Bad Chaz, uh, how, how impressed were you with uh, Mario Barrios, man? Oh, you know what? It was it was just nice to watch. Uh, yeah. This is his uh, his first fight uh, since his uh, loss, right? Yeah, his, yeah his, okay. he's in the win column since his last two yeah. fights. And uh, from what I've heard, he's went from Virgil Hunter to uh, Bob Santos. Bob yeah. Santos mm -hmm. is a new coach, and right. so he's kind right. of uh, – you know, new beginnings, but uh, yeah, I think he looked great. He had a great, uh, a great left hand. You know what I mean? Yeah. He was able to deliver a, a nice uh, liver shot to his opponent mm -hmm. and just ultimately just kind of tax him and wear him down as the fight progressed. And uh, I just think he looked good. He looked like Mario Barrios again. Yeah, yeah. right. I agree. Uh, bad mm -hmm. Chaz, uh, neighborhood hero Ryan Rios. That like uh, Bad Chaz mentioned that body work. Yeah, he he looked uh, he looked good. Uh, what, what impressed you about uh, Mario Barrios? You huh? know, I, I like the way he cut off the ring. Yeah. You know, he was able to cut off that ring and, and close that distance. And when he did, he he was able to capitalize, like you said, to the body and just that constant pressure, man. And he just looked big. He looked yeah. strong. Dude. Explosive. He, he did. And yeah. I don't know if that's credit to his new trainer or it's just something that he he's just doing.
doing different yeah. himself. But man, all around good performance, and I want him to get in there with those bigger names. Yeah. And and I yeah. know we had talked about it, and we were like talking about Broner and yeah. Benavides, uh, Jose Benavides Jr. Yeah, you were being yeah. the matchmaker, brother. Those were like, <laughs> yeah. man, those are great fights. Yeah, Broner, so, Jose mm-hmm. Benavides Jr. Mm-hmm. Why not, man? Yeah, uh, yeah. Exactly. Big, exciting fights. Yeah, absolutely big, exciting. Yeah, congratulations, Mario Barrios, on your victory. All right, guys, let's talk about the main event, which saw Oshaki Foster put on a clinic, winning a unanimous decision over Ray Vargas. He now is the WBC junior lightweight champ. Oh, boy, I was impressed with Foster. I know you were too, Bad Chaz. Tell us all about it, man. Oh, man, it just he just boxed beautifully. You know what I mean? He just put on this defensive uh, master class mm. against his opponent. And uh, you know what? He uh, he he was able to kind of use that that shoulder roll. Yeah, and, and right. a perfect example of it. But if you ever watch, uh, when you watch the fight, Foster, he kind of had his feet stayed in the pocket. But whenever he used the shoulder roll, if you watch him, he kind of leans back and kind of yeah. deflects that punch. And then he just leans back into it for the counter, and then he's just right there still on the inside. And, I mean, he was just uh, just outclassed him. Yeah, man, perfectly said. And, uh, yeah, that shoulder roll, man, that those fast reflexes where he put up his guard just to block right, you know, perfect example of a fighter yeah. knowing his style, right? Knowing, you know, knowing the ins and out of his style and just perfecting it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he he displayed a beautiful shoulder roll style. Um what impressed you about Foster, man? He he totally negated uh, uh, Ray Vargas' attack at all times. Yeah, you know what? I was impressed with pretty much everything he did yeah. in that ring, man. Like, his defense was just on point. His counters were on point. Mm-hmm. I mean, he he pretty much did everything he had to do to, to get that easy victory. Yeah. And I remember Shakur mentioning his <laughs> name and saying, hey, you know what? Foster is going to take over this division when I when uh, I'm out of here, and you know you just hear names and you're just thinking, oh yeah, you know right. you have your own guy in mind that you right. think's going to do, you know, take over the division, but. Man, Shakur was right on, dude. Yeah. I think I, uh, I think uh, Ray Vargas could have done a little bit better if he would have made some adjustments. Um, mm-hmm. I think that you know uh, his opponent um, when he was leaning back, you know what I mean, to kind of uh, use his defense to escape from Vargas's punches. I think Vargas could have probably jabbed at the body, you know what I mean, because his body wasn't moving and it was staying right, right there. Right. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm not counting him out. I think that it was still a good f- good fight, but I think that yeah, it's just. Two different uh, yeah, classes. He just, um, just yeah. couldn't make the adjustment in the yeah. fight, right? Uh, maybe looking at it afterwards, yeah. like you said, maybe. Oh, maybe but I then you, that. but then you got to think. Uh, Vargas went away from his original trainer, and that's that was mm. Nacho. Yeah. Oh, okay, and yeah. uh, so he might have had some different uh, instructions in that corner, yeah. maybe a different game plan different and training. It could have, you know, went against him. But yeah, dude, Foster looked good, man. <laughs> nice, and yeah, uh, he's going to be up against uh, Navarrete soon, <laughs> right? Oscar, uh, Valdez. Oscar Valdez, man, it's, man, it's exciting he's in that gonna division. Give everybody, uh, you know, they're, they're tough as fight, yeah. man, because like you said, that style to to figure it out is so tricky, man, in right. real time. And you know, obviously, Ray Vargas couldn't figure it yeah. out within those twelve rounds, man. But he, and he tried, man. Vargas tried, was there yeah. battling, he tried. Man. Yeah, um, yeah, um, man. Uh, well, we got a new player in the <laughs> 130 do. pound division. Congratulations to Ashaki Foster, the new WBC Junior Lightweight Champion. All right, guys, it's Fight week. All right, guys, let's preview the big fight that's coming up this Saturday night uh, on the zone. We had the return of WBA featherweight champion Lee Wood. 26 wins, only two losses, 16 knockouts. He will take on the tough and young Mauricio Lara, who is 25 and two, one draw, 18 big wins by knockout in a 12 round title fight. My goodness, I am excited about this. Yeah. Neighborhood Hero Ryan Reels. Why are we excited, man? Ah, just because they're both brawlers, man. They yeah, both have warriors, power. Man. Exactly. And and to me, man, this is a 50-50 fight. And uh like I can't I can't call this one, man, because they're both gonna go in there and, and one punch can change the whole oh, fight. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? And they both have just stamina, dude. They both are smart, dude. So I mean this this one right here is gonna be hard to call, dude. And I'm just we're in for a treat on this we're one. We're in for a treat, absolutely. Bad Chaz, uh uh Lee Wood, he's the he became champion uh, after that fight of the year candidate last year against uh, Michael Conlin, where he uh he got off off the canvas and chipped away at, at Conlin's body, ultimately knocking him out through the ropes in the last round. Uh, this is almost a year ago, though. Bad Chaz, could uh, inactivity play a role in this fight? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think so. But, hey, maybe he needed that. You know what I mean? No, uh, you're right. Yeah, it was a tough fight. Um, that's mm-hmm. that's taxing on him, you know yeah. what I mean? So, I mean, Good yeah, point. ultimately, Good point. he did get the victory. You know what I mean? He was a champ. Mm-hmm. So, if he wants to take a little time off, yeah. uh, I, w- I probably that's wouldn't probably have pushed it, it past a year. Yeah, you're right. I, I think a year is probably the max. And I, yeah. and I think that's about where he's at. Yeah. Um, like you said, that this is like a 50-50 fight. 
fight. Mm. Fans are winning this fight. Oh yeah. Um, they both are powerhouses. So it's like whoever gets, uh, whoever lands that, that power shot first or right. whoever hurts, uh, and wears down the body first is going to probably, uh, wear him down and win. I know you um, had mentioned age. Do you think that'll be a factor? In yeah. This you know what? Thanks for bringing that up. Cause I think that there's probably a 10 year, uh, age gap. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, Lee Woods, the older one, he's yeah, 34 yeah. Mm-hmm. and you got Marcio, uh, Mauricio Lara. He's 24. Yeah. 24, yeah. And mm-hmm. they both have this, uh, from, uh, according to uh box rec, same height, same reach. So, uh, very close neck and neck fight, both orthodox. Uh, it's going to be yeah. very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> very, yeah. Very great fight we have on our mm-hmm. hands. Don't miss this fight on the zone. WB8 featherweight champion Lee Wood versus Mauricio Lara. All right, guys. Well, as of this taping, today is February 13th. That is the birthday of the late and great Albuquerque native Johnny Tapia. And so we want to, uh, you know, give a tribute and a nod to the warrior that he was, Hall of Famer. Neighborhood here, Ryan Reels. What do you remember of Johnny Tapia, man? Man, dude, he was just a, a fighter, dude, that I just had to watch, man. Yeah. Growing up as a kid, dude, mm-hmm. these are the guys that I looked up to. You know what I mean? Um, just the way he was inside the ring, outside the ring. Everything he did, dude, was just charismatic, man. It, it was hard not to like this guy. Right. I mean, he gave it his all in the ring, dude. He put on a show for the fans. I mean, just a humble warrior. And, man, dude, just uh, I wish I could have seen him live. And, and <laughs> right. I wish I could have met him. And this is mm-hmm. one of the guys, like, I wish I could have... Uh, you know, like I said, like met and then also just uh, show, sh- just told him how grateful I was to yeah. for what he did for boxing, man. Just an awesome cat, dude. Um, and if and if anybody can watch that documentary that he has out, uh, what point. is it, Tapia? Tapia, yeah, on HBO Max. That's uh, something you guys got to watch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, 100%. And you're right, growing up uh, watching the boxing, you know, uh, a lot of fights on HBO. I remember mm-hmm. watching Th- Johnny Tapia. Uh, unbelievable fighter. Yes. Pressure fighter, combination fighter, uh, just banged the body like nobody else, man. Right. Uh, just came to fight every time. Mm-hmm. He brought it every single time. And, uh, man, yeah, he was part of uh, my, you know, my apprentice of growing, you know, watching yeah. boxing, man. Um, Bad Chaz, he fought fighters such as Danny Romero, Pauli Ayala, Marco Antonio Barrera, uh, winning titles in multiple divisions, man. Uh what do you think about him, man? Oh man, I think he's just extraordinary, bigger than yeah, life. Right. Um, I know he's he was he was before my uh, you know uh, as a fan for boxing. You yeah. know he was before my era, and it was kind of uh, part of your guys' era. Mm-hmm. But you know what I mean. Every and every now and again, I get I kind of want to go back in time yeah. and watch mm-hmm. some of these guys that you know uh, you know uh, showed it, and uh, they were I mean the legends in the ring. And I yeah. just think that if you need to do your homework, man, watch Johnny Tapia, right. watch some of these Talk about guys. that stamina, man. Oh man, he had great stamina for 12 rounds. And, and I mean, <laughs> he just, he just seemed like he was, uh, entertaining to the fans. And, uh, oh, yeah, right. I mean, it was just one of those guys, fans if he was them. fighting that night, you know, you were already home, you were ready to watch it. And, uh, man, I can't, I can't wait to watch some more film of that guy. Yeah. Well mm-hmm. said. Uh, thank you, Johnny Tapia. Yeah. You, and with that, we will, uh, leave you with our tribute to the great late Johnny Tapia.
Johnny Lee, Anthony Tapia. What do you do? I'm a professional fighter. Do you love boxing? I love the box. Are you a winner? I'm a winner. All right, guys, it's time to talk about the current events in boxing. All right, guys, well, Virgil Ortiz will take on Amanta Stanionis on April 29th at College Park Center in Arlington, Texas. Uh, big fight. Neighborhood hero Ryan Rios, uh, this is like a 50-50 fight. Are you excited about this fight? Yeah, of course, man. Anytime right. Virgil's uh, on that big stage, dude, I just, man, like I get excited and you guys all know I'm a big Virgil fan, dude. So, mm. like, I'm not looking past uh, Stelionis, but at the same time, dude, like, I want Virgil to fight some of those bigger names. I, I kind of want him to go after Spence and Crawford, dude. Absolutely. So I hope he looks impressive, dude, and, I, and I, I'm and i sure he's going to get a bigger name on this one. Right. Yeah, like Neighborhood Hero Ryan Reels just mentioned, the winner that Chaz uh, uh, is looking at uh, at a, a title shot, right? Against yeah, the big yeah. guys. Uh, how do you feel about this bout, man? Oh, I, I'm excited, man. Yeah, right. I love I love Virgil, man. Yeah. Like uh, he's a, he's fun to watch, and uh, I think it's a great fight for the fans. They both possess power. Um, I feel like Virgil has a little bit of the edge because it's going to be in Texas, and I know he has huge support over there. So um, I think that it's going to be wild in the crowd and uh, and an exciting fight, and the fans are going to get a real treat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally agree. Uh, yeah, so Ortiz versus Stanionis, April 29th in Arlington, Texas. All right, guys. And moving along, we also have news that pound for pound king, arguably, <laughs> undisputed super middleweight champion Canelo Alvarez will be back in the ring against John Ryder, a UK-based fighter, uh, on May 6th. But the big news is that they're they're trying to make the fight in Jalisco, Mexico, Ooh, nice. which would be big news, right? Um, mm. Canelo fighting back in his homeland, man. <laughs> that is exciting news. Uh, does that excite you? Uh, oh, of neighborhood course, Ryan Reels? man. That's something like I would love to be a part right? of too, yeah. man. Yeah, and I don't know a whole lot about Ryder, man, but right. you know, hopefully, uh, Canelo looks you know like his old self, and he goes in there and he takes care of business because, man, especially in Mexico, dude, he's kind of half. He has yeah. to win. I think this is more like a showcase fight. I uh, no disrespect so. to Ryder, you know, yeah. but uh, but uh, yeah, he should be able to, you know. Uh, Look good against Ryder, mm -hmm. but uh, man, the, this year's been uh, the year of already of upsets, right? Yeah. So we can never count out anybody, right, Betches? Oh, absolutely not. I think that uh, you know anybody that steps in the ring, you know what I mean? They're a threat. So, but uh, you know what? I, I think that this is great. It's in Mexico. It's Canelo in Mexico. I right. think that he has mm -hmm. all of the support there. Ryder's kind of walking into an unknown territory, like as far as the fan base is going. Right. Yeah. So it's going to be full against pledge it. against Canelo. I think it's a great uh, fight for Canelo to kind of get back into the get off that ring rust. You yeah, know what I mean? Right, and right. and uh, go from there. Yeah. So that is the word, guys. Exciting news. Yeah. Uh, so that what those were the current events in boxing. All right, guys. Well, that concludes our podcast. Uh, I want to thank all our fans once again, mm -hmm. our subscribers, for uh, helping us reach that milestone of 100 subs. Absolutely. That was pretty exciting news. When you text me over, I'm like, oh, really? That's <laughs> yeah. cool. I had to check it out. Yeah, yeah somebody yeah. texts me that, too. They're like, hey, you got 100 uh, subscribers. I'm like, oh, shoot, nice. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Uh, anybody we want to shout out? Oh, you know what, man? Just like you said, just embracing the 100 subscribers. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say I wish wish all of our wives a happy Valentine's Day mm -hmm. and supporting us, you know what I mean, uh, so that we can uh, reach those goals that we like. So, yeah, um, yeah that being said, uh, if you guys have any shout outs. Yeah, I just want to shout out all our past guests, man, because uh, honestly, like mm -hmm. we couldn't have done that without you guys. And uh, right. thank yeah, you for coming exactly. on. And uh, guys, stay tuned for more guests because they're they're coming. For sure. Absolutely. And I'll, I, like always, uh, shout out to uh, Sound Guy Rob. Yep. Cameraman Liam, thank you guys yeah, thanks for you guys. helping us out. And with that said, I am Coach D, Bad Chaz, and Neighborhood Hero Ryan Reels. And we're out, guys. Peace.